head with common sense. The show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Our show is a production of our political committee, CRRH, also known as the Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp, and our affiliated nonprofit organization, the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation, or THCF. We have a great show for you tonight. Human from Human and the Human Revolution is here with Mr. Tim Pate. How are you folks doing over there? Oh, we're just great. We are. I am excited. <laughs> Glad to have you on, Human. Thank you. Uh, we have a uh, hemp news segment. We've got several groundbreaking, earth-shattering stories in the world of marijuana and cannabis and hemp that we'll be going over in just a moment. We'll be taking your phone calls and have some video clips we'll be playing as well. So stay tuned for a great show. Uh, for now, though, we'll buy a few crucial moments as we bring on our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. Feel the force. Here is Human and Mr. Tim Pate. All right. So, uh, so this song is uh, is, an, is my uh, my uh, my the truth about hemp and cannabis, and uh, it came from years of intake and, and knowledge, and uh, this was my uh, the outcome of that. It's called the Tree of Life. Y'all, a little bit about a plant I know that can save the world. It grows long and tall and has flowers that can make your mind swirl. It's a funky plant with a fiber that is resistant to rain and mold. It's the strongest plant fiber known to man, the best rope you'll ever hold. Well, the pioneers covered up the wagon trains with the canvas made of hemp. In Washington and Jefferson, they grew it on their farms and said to make the most of it. The first stars and stripes were sewn on hemp, the first constitution too. It's used around the world for food, fiber, oil, medicine, and fuel. And if we press it seeds, we won't have no need for any other oil. We can make paints and inks, or run our cars, go it back next season. It'll fix the soil, the most nutritious seed we can put in our mouth with omega-6 and 3. We can feed the world with the tree of life and live sustainably. But if we cut down all the trees, we won't have nowhere to breathe. We'll grow fields of hemp instead. We can make our paper, build a house from it. It's the God is playing, growing wild and free. Living the way that we ought to be. Gonna leave my children a better world than my ancestors left me. Well, the flowers of the female hemp plant make the best medicines on earth. Helps cancer and AIDS patients eat their food. Helps those with depression overcome the blues. Welcome to epilepsy, nausea, insomnia, stress, neurosis, psychosis, pain, PMS. All the studies have been done and other doctors agree. But they can't make money off this plant. Just see, because it's free. It grows from a seed, wild and free like we ought to be. You know the future is growing in our own backyards. But if we cut down all the trees, we won't have no Hemp instead, we can make our big to build a house from it. It's the truth, God is playing, growing wild and free. Living the way that we ought to be. Gonna leave my children a better world than my ancestors that left me.
day and age when we seem to lack spirituality This one single plant can bring us back 10,000 years in history To the Shiva Puranas, to Jesus, to Christ, to the Buddha, the pagans, the goddess, the light To commune with all the animals, to own with all the trees To realize the goddess seek is inside me Yes, the earth is a mother, we gotta take care of the earth The earth is the mother that gives life birth And we can heal all our relations with a single green plant We can start right now But if we cut down all the trees won't have nowhere to breathe We'll grow fields and hemp instead We can make our big build a house from medicine Got a plant grown wild and free Living the way that we ought to be Gonna leave my children a better world Than my ancestors left me Whoa, whoa La, 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 la That was great. I love that song. Thank you. All right. That's Human from Human and Human Revolution, Mr. Tim Pake, with his uh, classic anthem, dare I say, The Tree of Life. Well, we've got our hemp news segment tonight, so uh, we'll start with a great story, earth-shattering story out of the state of California. A cannabis measure is one step closer to the California ballot. An initiative to make marijuana legal and open to local taxation and regulation is one step closer to getting on the California ballot this November. Backers of the initiative on Thursday turned in nearly 700,000 signatures to state officials to place the measure on the state ballot, according to reports. Far more than the 433,971 valid voter registered signatures required. California Secretary of State Deborah Bowen has until June 24th to certify the initiative, the Sacramento Bee reports. The measure, if approved by voters, will allow anyone over 21 years old to possess up to one ounce of marijuana or grow plants within a limited space for personal use, 24 square feet. It would also allow local jurisdictions to tax and regulate it. There's a clause in the initiative that allows for municipalities, if they desire to do so, to establish regulations governing the retail distribution and sale of cannabis. Personal non-commercial possession or cultivation of marijuana would not be subject to taxation under this initiative. An April field poll found that 56% of California voters supported legalizing marijuana. And Mike DiCamillo, the poll's director, said the initiative had a 50% chance of passing, according to the Los Angeles Times reports. Next week, proponents of a statewide measure to legalize medical marijuana in South Dakota will also turn in signatures to the Secretary of State's office in South Dakota to place a proposal on the November 2010 ballot. The petitioners claim that they possess nearly twice the number of signatures necessary to qualify for the uh, South Dakota vote. Separate ballot drives are underway in other states, including Oregon and Washington. In Washington, a new drive has been launched by some of the backers of the Seattle Hemp Fest under the banner Sensible Washington. Their logo is George Washington, the first hemp farmer in chief. And uh, uh, it would allow adults to buy marijuana and legally cultivate it. There are two initiatives here in Oregon. Our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act that would completely legalize uh, personal, private, non-commercial cultivation of marijuana and would regulate sales of marijuana through uh, marijuana-only stores and allow businesses to set up to cultivate uh, uh, strains and seeds without regulation. So it looks like there will be a votes up and down the West Coast. There's also another initiative out there uh, sponsored by Voter Power that would set up medicinal dispensaries in the state of Oregon for medical patients. While our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act proposal would allow patients to buy medical marijuana at farmers cost through state pharmacies, in addition to growing their own without a permit. Our next story is from the Associated Press from today. January 29, 2010. It's written uh, by uh, Colleen Slavell. Uh, Medical marijuana in Denver. A bill aimed at preventing recreational cannabis users from skirting the law to obtain medical marijuana won initial backing in the Senate in Colorado's legislature on Friday. The measure, Colorado Senate Bill 109, bars doctors from writing recommendations inside dispensaries that sell medical marijuana requires that doctors review a person's medical history and give them a full exam before recommending that they become a medical, legal, medical marijuana user. 
Those between the ages of 18 and 21 would have to get approval from two doctors, which is already required for patients under the age of 18. The original bill also required patients to go for follow-up visits so doctors could assess whether marijuana was effective in treating them, but the centers voted to remove that requirement. Patients whose regular doctors can't recommend medical marijuana, including those who rely on the Veterans Administration and federally funded clinics, complained that requiring follow-up visits would have required them to spend hundreds of dollars that they couldn't afford. Co-sponsor Senator Chris Romer of Denver said lawmakers may have to revisit this change when the bill becomes up for a final vote next week to make sure it's still tough enough to prevent fraud. He and Senator Nancy Spence, a Republican uh, from Centennial, Colorado, said it was a good first step in regulating the state's booming medical marijuana industry. Another bill to create more oversight for hundreds of dispensaries that have opened up in Colorado, most of them in the last year, is set to be introduced next week. According to Senator Romer, this is a good down payment on the solution, end quote. The number of people getting medical marijuana cards in Colorado has been growing rapidly since last year after the Obama administration announced it wouldn't target medical marijuana use in states where it's legal. Dispensaries have also begun popping up all around the state of Colorado since then, and lawmakers fear some are working too closely with the doctors to allow recreational users to become legal medical marijuana users. About 17,000 people have already received their medical marijuana cards from Colorado State, but another 20,000 or so have applied and are waiting for approval. Uh, in fact, in just one day, two weeks ago, the state office received over 1,400 applications in that single day. The last official monthly count is from October when 4,751 people got cards, more than the total number of cards issued in all of 2008. This story is written by Colleen Slavelle of the Associated Press uh, today, January 29th. <clears throat> Our next story is from Time Magazine. Uh, it's from uh, this week. Uh, January 27th, written by Sam Jeweler. Uh, it's been years in the making, derailed by Congress three times in about as many years, but medicinal marijuana could soon be heading to the nation's capital. In 1998, voters in Washington put themselves near the forefront of the budding medical marijuana movement when they voted nearly 7 to 3 for doctor-prescribed cannabis, a greater majority than those in any other of the eight statewide ballot initiative states that have passed medical marijuana around the country. In 1998, California was the only existing state, and both Oregon and Washington uh, passed their medical marijuana laws, and those were the first three states in the country. But uh, there are no celebratory smokeouts uh, yet. Uh, instead, poll workers spent uh, that election night obscuring the results of the vote in deference to a last-minute congressional amendment, pulling funds from uh, the District of Columbia for the processing of any drug legalization initiative. Ballots had been printed prior to the ban, but the D.C. Board of Elections and Ethics decided that to follow the intent of the law, it had to withhold the results after the votes had been cast. Uh, Washington uh, Metro voter analysis Mark Plotkin said, quote, I know of no case where a federal entity has told another entity that they cannot even announce the results. We're not even talking about implementation of the law, end quote. Twelve years later, today, the political landscape appears to profoundly change. The sponsor of the 1998 congressional ban, Bob Barr, Republican from Georgia, has gone from a drug hawk to a libertarian, legalize it presidential candidate, even lobbying against the law he once wrote. Fourteen states have legalized medical marijuana in the 14 years since California became the first to do so, and several more are working on legislation now. In December 2009, a uh, Congress, dominated by Democrats, quietly lifted the Barr Amendment, giving the city an opportunity to enact its old cannabis law passed back in 1998. A few weeks later, City Council Member Derek Katinia moved to do just that by introducing a bill that would implement Initiative 59 with the co-sponsorship of nine of the 13 council members. Don't ask him if there are more serious issues he should be working on. He says, quote, every time someone says that, I think my head should explode. As far as I'm concerned, this is an important issue. The evidence I've seen certainly suggests a powerful medicinal use for marijuana that can stimulate appetite and reduce pain and suffering. So frankly, that's my decision, and I'm capable of doing more than one thing at a time, as are my colleagues, and as is this uh, District of Columbia government, end quote. 
Katania acknowledges that the policy details still have to be worked out. How many dispensaries to allow, whether they'll be nonprofit or private, for which diseases prescription cannabis will be available, where the stuff will be grown. He leans more toward restrictive implementation, knowing that any legal cannabis law can be struck down by future governments. He said, quote, the voters approve the medical use of marijuana, and not the recreational use, he said. The more professional and controlled evidence-based our system is, the greater likelihood it will be sustained going forward. End quote. Such a system, Ketania says, might create five to ten nonprofit dispensaries around the city of Washington, D.C., which could have to be at least a thousand feet away from places like schools and parks and other dispensaries. In contrast, for years, Los Angeles has had hundreds of dispensaries privately owned with a 500-foot rule the, uh, within schools and parks. But the L.A. City Council passed a revised cannabis law just hours after D.C. outlined its own, adopting D.C.'s 1,000-foot rule and cutting the number of dispensaries allowed in Los Angeles from about 450 to 150. A spokesman for the District of Columbia City Council say the bill is likely to get through the council by the end of spring and may be approved in Congress by the end of summer. Studies found that medical cannabis is effective in mitigating nausea, stimulating needed appetite and AIDS and cancer patients, and acting as a general pain reliever, among other effects. The American Medical Association, quote, calls for further adequate and well-controlled studies of marijuana and related cannabinoids in patients, end quote, in a policy statement that takes a cautious position on the issue. Some of the leading activists for Initiative 59 are equally ambivalent, even as they appear within reach uh, of and see light at the end of the tunnel. According to Wayne Turner, whose partner Steve Michael originally sponsored Initiative 59 before dying in the months leading up to its vote, he said, quote, it's not a victory, but it's not something that I really feel like celebrating. Democracy has been denied for over 10 years, and we've lost a lot of people along the way, end quote. The voting bloc of recreational cannabis smokers is less likely to be enthusiastic if Catania gets his way. He says, quote, not see this as the camel's nose under the tent to the broad legalization of marijuana, nor the recreational use, nor do I envision supporting the use of marijuana for anxiety or hangnails, he says. This is for people who are profoundly sick, end quote. And that's the end of the Time Magazine article that was published on January 27th, written by Sam Jeweler. Our last story tonight uh, talks about the medicinal use of uh, medical marijuana. Marijuana compounds possess synergenic anti-cancer effects, according to a new study. From January 21st in San Francisco, marijuana's active compounds act synergistically to inhibit the growth of cancer cells and induce malignant cell death according to preclinical trial data published online by the journal Molecular Cancer Therapeutics. Investigators at the University of California Pacific Medical Center Research Institute assessed whether the administration of non-psychoactive cannabidiol, or CBD, would enhance the anti-cancer effects of THC on glioblastoma, or terminal brain cancer cells. The researchers reported that a combination of cannabinoids showed greater anti-cancer activity than the administration of either compound individually. The authors of the report wrote, quote, We discovered that cannabidiol enhanced the ability of THC to inhibit cell proliferation and induce cell cycle arrest and apoptosis, or programmed cell death, end quote. The investigators concluded, quote, Individually, THC and cannabidiol can activate distinctive pathways in glioblastoma cells that ultimately culminate in the inhibition of cancer cell growth and invasion as well as induction of cell death. We hypothesize that if the individual agents were combined, a convergence of shared pathways may ensue, leading to an enhanced ability of the combination treatment to inhibit certain cancer cells' phenotypes. We found this to be true in this investigation, end quote. A 2008 scientific review published in the journal Cancer Research reported that the cannabinoids inhibit cell proliferation in a wide range of cancers, including breast cancer, brain cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, skin cancer, pancreatic cancer, and lymphoma. The full text of this study, cannabidiol enhances the inhibitory effects of delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol 
on human glioblastoma cell proliferation and survival. Appears online in the journal Molecular Cancer Therapeutics. That's the end of our hip news segment tonight. That was a mouthful. Yeah, it is. It is. Good word. Good thing I went to college. I know, it's true. Yeah. And you can read. And I can read. <laughs> That's it. Hey, hey. So, welcome. Ah, oh, thank you. Welcome, human. Thanks. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks, I mean, you Paul. played a couple of Hempstock festivals, but I That's don't true. think you made it here on the show before. And First time. Thanks for playing your, yeah, you play know, the you. anthem of the hemp movement. That's thank what I'm going to call it. I think it's great. It says everything that we stand for in terms of... It's a great uh, song. Great song. Everything from the use of hemp, use of cannabis, its medicinal use, its spiritual use. You were truly inspired. We appreciate it. Now, how many albums you, you got out right now? Uh, I just uh, just am getting ready to release my sixth album. Oh, right on. Uh, it's called Love Always Prevails. Right. And there's actually another version of Tree of Life with a different, little different with an upright bass and a, um, and a fiddle player. So just we'll change it up a little bit, get it out to another audience. Is that on That's your great. own label? Uh, yes. If they wanted to find out more, how, how what what can they do? You can go to uh, thehumanrevolution.org. There you go. Thehumanrevolution.org. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Got to say, your albums are very inspirational. I just love uh, listening to them. They, Thank you, uh, Paul. Have a lot of very positive, uplifting, inspirational tunes. So I right on, man. Really enjoy that. That's what we're trying to do. And that's what you're doing. <laughs> it's really right. cool. It's true. It's true. It's true. Hey, I think we have a caller who's been standing by for some time. Wow. Let's see if we can bring him into the show. Hello, caller. You're on our show. Oh, hey, Paul. We can have him. There you are. You're excited. When then we shot your eardrums out. Hello. Hello. We you. Yeah. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes. Very well. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. And uh, I was just wanting to say that uh, that has. Yeah. Yeah. We do too. We got a lot of feedback coming yeah. into the office. If you got any radios or anything in the background, turn those down or off or TVs or something. Yep, turn the TV off. But, uh, yeah, that could induce feedback. Jimmy Hendrix that might like it. <laughs> Is that better, though? Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot better. All right, great. Um, but, yeah, I hope that we uh, pass those initiatives because we just need to take all this rights back into this state, you know, and just, you know, quit with these unjust laws and this persecution. And I had a quick, you know, a few quick questions. Go ahead. Um, and uh, a question about hemp, and I know they make hemp with really low-grade uh, THC, but if they change the, the, the type and the strain and the quality of it, will that affect the, the quality of the fabric and, and the other things that come out of the Yeah, you know, uh, uh, the uh, hemp content, the THC content in the low THC strains has a number of effects on the output of the crop. When it comes to the fiber crop, low THC hemp produces about half of the fiber that, say, 3 to 4% THC strains produce. So in Canada and Europe, they're able to cultivate hemp, but they have to get a special cultivar from France, a special company that has a non-stable phenotype where farmers can't grow the seeds from that because the seeds from that, in addition to producing very little seed, uh, the seeds are naturally have more THC than 1%. So you have to go back to this French company to keep buying this unstable phenotype so you can keep your seeds below uh, half of 1% THC. So they produce about half the fiber and 1 15th to 1 20th the amount of seeds. Uh, these low THC strains, what they've done is they've bred out the flowers. By breeding out the flowers, they've bred out most of the THC. So there's one tiny terminal bud at the very tip top of these tall stalks. But by breeding out the flowers, they've also bred out the seeds. So where these uh, uh, low THC varieties produce about 600 pounds of hemp seed an acre, according to Notre Dame, the feral hemp in southern Illinois at about 4% THC produces over 8,000 pounds of uh, seeds per acre on average. So that's, uh, you know, 15 times more. And so... Uh, the the low THC strains not only produce inferior fiber, they produce negligible amount of protein and, and oil and biodiesel. Hmm. All right. And also, uh, what are your 
guys' thoughts on uh, you know, Ron Paul's statements about ending the CIA and how they've basically been behind the whole illegal drug trade ever since Prohibition ended. And uh, I think Ron Paul's 100% right on. And uh, he knows, and he's telling the truth. Ron Paul is about the only Republican that tells the truth, just like Dennis Kucinich is one of the few Democrats who tell the truth. And I'm happy to say we've had Dennis Kucinich on this show, and uh, about 15 years ago I helped sponsor Ron Paul benefit when he was running for president as a libertarian. So I think both of them are rare in politicians today and that they tell the truth. So I agree with them 100%. People for, for abusing their, their, their authority. And um, but there's this new movie coming out February 15th called How We Won the West. And um, it's about basically just how the CIA and, and, and they've just been you know, <clears throat> running the whole drug trade and, and this pressure from all other you know, angles of people like the alcohol companies and, and pharmaceutical companies to yeah. keep the drugs illegal. And uh, I mean, it, 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 it's supposed to be a very, very illuminating film. Well, I look forward to um, seeing that. That's How the West Was Won, not that 1960 How classic, but a new documentary out there. How We Won the West. And it How We Won the West. West. Okay, How We Won the West. We'll look forward. It's a little different. Yeah. Well, thanks for your call and your comments. We appreciate your, your oh, and questions. Also, um, another quick question. How, How is Jack? Jack, Jack is Jack recovering is? in Eugene. He... Uh, is still in a nursing home. Uh, there's, I'm not sure if there's been any breakthroughs in the custody battle over him between his wife and other people. But uh, last I heard, which has been a couple of months, he's uh, recovering pretty slowly and still unable to communicate effectively. I talked to Mark a couple of days ago, and uh, there will be a hearing in Wednesday uh, in Eugene on Wednesday, excuse me. Uh, concerning the uh, the issues surrounding uh, the, the the custody, and uh, hopefully those will be settled on Wednesday, and uh, they can move forward with Jack's care. Uh, I know they have plans to move him out of the nursing home and into a private facility, perhaps into a private home, uh, and that's what they're hoping for, so that they can give him more direct attention. Uh, but Jack is, is he's still with us. It was September that he went down. And September twelfth. He is still with us. Here right it is there. in January. So we're grateful for small miracles still. Uh, you know, and that's that's what everybody is still praying for, some small miracles. And, and, and I know this is also uh, off the topic, and I, and I uh, don't need to be taking so much time, but I saw this YouTube video about this guy, Mark Dice, who was getting people to sign a petition to end the First Amendment, and people were just readily signing it. That's and, scary. What do you guys think about that? That's crazy. Scary, Bad idea. You know, it's like the Supreme Court just voted that corporations can control our political processes <laughs> last week. Do they do away with the First Amendment? We might as all just roll over and uh, welcome, let the robots take over. You know, that's that's what we're heading toward. If we don't stand up for our rights today. The uh, be careful what you sign. Read everything you're signing. Yeah. In Texas, about ending gun shows and stuff and private sales of guns. Yeah, it's pretty frightening, the assault on freedoms that's beginning to take effect, even though we've got a president who, uh, who stands for freedom in a number of ways. Uh, the remnants uh, of the last administration, they've taken over the Supreme Court, and these narrow 5-4 rulings, such as the one that allows uh, uh, corporations to uh, contribute unlimited amounts of money to, to political campaigns, just changed the whole political game as we've had it for over the past hundred years. Thanks for your, your call and your comment. Thanks, guys. You bet. Thank you. If you're out there and you have a question or comment for us tonight, please call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. You know, I, I watched the Plant the Seed uh, movie, too, here about a week and a half ago. They uh -huh. brought it here and uh, had a, a preview here in... in in Portland, and that was an interesting film too. They haven't, yeah. haven't finished it. They were doing a uh, not a mock-up, but a, a trial run of it, and yeah. wanting people to help. We used to have clips of it here on the show about four or five years ago. The producer Michael Henning came through here and worked with the local uh, movie school in earlier edits of it. Oh, I like you know, what so, I saw. Yeah, I do. It's not here. It's non-narrated, and it's just straight 
footage from when Woody Harrelson planted his hemp seeds. Everybody and speaks for themselves. Alex White Plume one, yeah. planted hemp seeds yes. on the South Dakota. Yes. Craig Lee in in uh, Kentucky and yes. Donna Cockrell, the yes. the grade school teacher, who, exactly. who almost lost her job for having Woody Harrelson come to her classroom. All of that's covered in depth in that documentary. That's right. And Woody planting the seeds and all of yeah, that. I was there that day. Yeah. I was there. And the night before that, it, he planted them on June 1st, 1996. And he had a hip conference in uh, Lexington, Kentucky at the Hyatt right. uh, just the weekend that before too. that. Yeah. And at the end of the conference, he came over and said, Paul, you want to see a concert? So I walked with him across the Hyatt through a hall. And we're in Rap Auditorium, which apparently is attached to the the Hyatt there and walked up on stage and got to meet and, and stand on stage during the uh, Bob Seeker show. Right <laughs> yeah, it was pretty oh, exciting. Rupp Arena. Yeah, Rap? Rupp Arena. Rupp, Rupp. Rupp Arena. Rupp Auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. Arena. <laughs> it's an arena. It's an arena. It is. We have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Yes, hello. Hello. My question Howdy. was, is it possible to raise cannabis in a HUD housing apartment? Yes. If you have a medical marijuana permit and you only grow for yourself, you only grow a total of 24 plants and have 24 ounces. There are several court cases that protect you cultivating cannabis for your own use. My, that was my only question. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, that's been litigated a number of times over the past dozen years. Oh, yes. We and get so, that question, too, occasionally here. It's always the same answer now. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that's litigated in Oregon courts. Uh, different uh, states might have different interpretations. So it all depends on what the local courts rule in your state. True. Yeah. So, human, you've moved to Oregon. You're well, an Oregonian now. I'm, uh, I'm in trend. I'm in shift. Yeah. I'm in trend. Really? Right you, oh, right you have on. been a Californian, but you're kind of all around the globe, right? Yeah, yeah. I, have, I don't stay in one place too long anyways, but it sounds like I, I'm liking the southern Oregon area. I love the Ashland area myself. Mm -hmm. I love it down there. Yeah, that is beautiful. It. You know, speaking of Ashland, just, uh, gee, it was uh, uh, about a little over a week and a half ago, I got a call from a longtime activist who's worked on our TV show, Paul McAdam. I could see him almost like he was here three weeks ago behind camera number three here. And Paul McAdams uh, passed away back on uh, the 19th of January. And last week we... Uh, did a tape show so we could have a big ceremony led by Native American drummers here for him. But I'd just like to dedicate this show and uh, As we all send were. our uh, hearts and thoughts out to Paul to help him in his journey and thank him for his long work and help. He was always at the forefront of all sorts of movements, everything from anti-nuclear power, peace movements, uh, forest preservation. Mainly, he was he was really in tune with Native American rights and worked uh, at Big Mountain in Nevada and with many different tribes. John Trudell and his whole band counted Paul as a close friend, and he helped introduce me to to John Trudell, which I really honor that introduction. Anyway, we're sorry to say, Camera Three, uh, our uh, the comrade right Paul now. McAdam has fallen, but now we have yeah. another spirit helper on the other side, and I know he's going to be very proactive, pulling a lot of strings so for us over there to get uh, uh, marijuana legal and hemp uh, allowed. So true. Paul, I was wondering if uh, if uh, if the news about um, Derwin White Lightning had actually come out yet. I don't. You know, we haven't really talked about that, and that's a man who was beaten to death in a Midwest jail cell, right? He was There's a Native American activist here in this area. Also, I recognized him once I went yeah. and looked at it. I go, I know that guy. He was a, a Native American uh, activist, also worked with Native rights, and trying to clean up the reservation, the Cannonball Reservation, in North Dakota. And he just delivered a bunch of food and clothing by truckload, and he was bringing medicine to the uh, to the to the reservation, um, and he got stopped at the Amtrak station. He was uh, booked, and within three hours, he was um, found hanging in his jail cell. And the official, um, the official story was that it was a suicide, is what they, they told him. But we, uh, his brother got his glasses back, which were bloody and broken, and, 
everyone pretty much who knew Derwin, who was a medicine man trying to stop suicide, knew that there's no way he would have committed suicide three hours into a jail. Right. Short, you know. All too often, especially in the Midwest, in the Dakotas, the police feel they have impunity to kill any Native American. And they've done it with all too frequent audacity. I'm sorry to hear that. We certainly need to start some sort of investigation into that event. I believe an investigation has been started and uh, as well, um, you know, another another helper to have on the other side, you know. Yeah, that's right. I'm Carl sure head, I'm sure <laughs> Paul and Irvin were friends and we can bet that they're now working in tandem yep. to help us. I hope. If you have any uh, questions, you can call us tonight at uh, 503-288 4448. That's 503 288 4448. We have a little film clip we're going to roll now, and we'll be back in just a second to take more phone calls and show you some hemp products. So stay tuned. January 1981, West Los Angeles, California. Mere days before the presidential inauguration. Jack and a small encampment of followers are campaigning for California hemp and marijuana initiatives. Along comes Ronald Reagan. President-elect Reagan's motorcade pulls up to the federal building. He's scheduled for a pre-inaugural haircut. According to eyewitnesses, the great communicator questions the building manager. By the way, he says, what are the Canadians protesting about out there? And uh, he thought that the marijuana flag we were flying out there was the maple leaf. <laughs> and, he, and, and the uh, guy that's the uh, manager of the office of the building, he says, well, he's, they're, they're, not, they're not Canadians. Those are marijuana protesters. And Reagan says, well, isn't there something you can do about that? Well, we've taken the to court and they've won. Well, I'll be on duty in five days. I'll see what I can do for you. What Reagan does is have Jack and five others arrested for violating an arcane wartime sabotage act. The others pay a $5 fine and get probation. Jack fights. He refuses to pay the fine and loses. His appeal is unsuccessful. The United States Supreme Court refuses to hear the case. So on July 14th, 1983, Jack reports to federal prison at Terminal Island, California. There was a lot of bank robbers in federal prison in 1983. And um, there I went, what are you in here for? Um, I was registering voters after dark <laughs> on federal property. <laughs> they put you in jail. <laughs> Jack's incarceration would have been insignificant, except for the fact that he finally had the time and solitude to begin writing another book. There was no radio, there was no television, no movies, no nothing to distract me. A couple guys would sing gospel songs a, a cappella, but that was, that was about it. I knew that Jack Herrera's book was going to become an underground classic. I knew it right away from the first time I saw the first edition. People opened that book and said, you can make food out of hemp seed oil, you can burn it in a lamp, you can make rope, uh, you can make parachute cordage and tie your shoes, and the Constitution was really printed on hemp paper. I mean, people... Okay, that. that's an excerpt from The Emperor of Hemp, about our hero Jack Herrera. We'll talk you, show you some of the hemp products they were talking about here in just a moment. First, we're going to take a phone call. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Yes. Yep. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, I would like to know uh, if they're going to legalize uh, marijuana soon and if they will have it legalized in Milwaukee, Oregon area, Oregon City. Well, we are working hard to do just that. We have sponsored and I helped author the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. And just this week, 
we opened a petition office at 5226 Northeast Sandy Boulevard. And so oh. we're starting a petition campaign. We've hired a local company, Democracy Resources, and it would legalize marijuana the 1st of January in a mere 11 months from now. Marijuana could be legal for anyone to possess, use, cultivate, and grow. And if you want to get a license, you could even sell it. And so uh, it would also, the uh, proceeds from adults buying marijuana in state licensed stores would be used, 2% would be used to promote industrial hemp for fiber, oil, and biodiesel fuel. Well, that would be so, great, huh? Yeah, we're uh, pushing that initiative. You can find out more about it. Go to our website at octa, O-C-T-A, 2010.org. That's O-C-T-A, 2010.org. And if you can, come on our Facebook page and make friends of our fan page. I don't um, have a computer. Uh, oh, okay. Yet. But I wonder, do you have any literature that you send out at all? Uh, yeah, yeah. And if you're, you're welcome to come down to our new office there at 5226 Northeast Sandy Boulevard. That's our new petition office. Or just call us at our office here in Portland, 503-235-4606 is the okay. best number to call to get hooked in to the petition campaign right now. That's 503. Yeah, I'd like to have some something sent to me because I don't have a car. I could always arrange mm -hmm. a, a ride if I could get you know, all the information mm -hmm. and some kind well, of... Give us a thing. call. Leave your name, address, okay. phone number, and uh, we'll be following up. Oh, and good. if you can get anybody to come down there, we're opening up our office. We're going to have our first benefit for the oh, Oregon okay. Cannabis Tax Act petition coming up on February 12th at uh, the Village Ballroom. That's at 700 Northeast Deacom Street. So from 6.30 until the wee hours of the morning on Friday, February 12th, two weeks from tonight, we'll have a benefit featuring Belleville, Cornette, Davis, Davis and Pate, this gentleman. <laughs> we'll also have uh, uh, Jim Matheson, Jim Matheson of the Herbivores playing with yeah, Side Street Rennie. There'll be past Margo and... Uh, who knows what else? Uh, yeah, who knows? Jim Matheson might solo. Well, we probably will have the Native American drum circle there as well afterward to drum our eardrums away. Well, I have to tell you a short story, fast, uh, very humorous. I never even knew what marijuana was, and uh, I went over and to see my daughter. It's, well, at the time, she was 17, 18, living with her dad, and... I went over and she goes, oh, I've made some brownies. And she goes, I want you to, I just want you to try them. It's my first time at baking. So I took, I had some of them and I had a bottle of Pepsi with me. And so she I, made I, cannabis brownies for the first yeah. time her baking? Very good. In, in, her, in her closet in her bedroom. She had them stored. I see. Anyway, I, see. I took a bite of them. I said, well, how come you put so much coconut in them? Or what is this? <laughs> I didn't say a word. Well, we drove up the street to meet my father for Chinese food. And by the time I got there, I couldn't I couldn't even function. Yeah, eating and cannabis can, over can hit you hard and heavy sometimes if you take too much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks for that. Anyway, he story. thought I was smashed. I wasn't. I was drinking Pepsi. <laughs> But my right. sister said, well, you've never had brownies before? And I go, no. <laughs> the first time, is, it's, it's tough. Happened to me, too, once in, in college. And, I, yeah, I never took those before going on stage again. <laughs> yeah. I can mess you up. My dad never did believe me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for your call. And we thanks, look forward and to your support in our so Oregon Cannabis Tax Act campaign. Okay, thanks so much. You bet. Thank you. If you have a question for us tonight, give us a call at 503-288-4448. That number there on your screen, 503-288-4448. We've got time for oh, a few more calls. Well, have we're going to start our, our uh, sharing segment, otherwise known as show and tell to you old school people, with hemp paper. This is some hemp paper, notebook paper, made by Tree Free Eco Paper, and I am the founder and president of Tree Free Eco Paper, and I distributed this paper from 1989 through 1997 as a business before I spent too much on payroll and buildings and not enough on inventory and went out of business with Tree Free Eco Paper. But 
we changed the paper industry, and this is one of our most popular products. It was notebook filler paper made from 50% hemp, 50% straw. We also have these nifty notepads from the 50% hemp, 50% straw. Really like that logo on there. It kind of says it all about non-wood paper. Came up with that term tree-free and trademarked it, too. That's another story. Next door, we have Nature Path Hemp Plus Granola. Hemp seed in food. It's safe to eat. Uh, it's nutritious and good for you. So we highly recommend hemp foods. We also have hemp milk. Here's some hemp milk over here. See? Hemp milk. So we put our hemp milk in with our hemp cereal. And there's your, your breakfast of champions, if you ask me. I'm sure Michael Phelps would really eat, endorse this nowadays. I bet he would. Next door, we have this hemp uh, hairspray. Can you believe it? Hemp is big in beauty supply stores nowadays. You can go into any of these little mom and pop beauty supply stores and find numerous hemp products like this. Hemp volumizing shampoo from Natrell. Natrell, hemp volumizing shampoo strengthened with hemp seed oil. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. The next door from Humboldt Brewing, we have hemp ale. Uh, the one to have when you're having only one. Hemp ale, it's a good one. So uh, there's a few different products that have sprung up over the life of this show. We have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Uh, hi. Hey, um, howdy. I was interested in obtaining a medical marijuana card. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And uh, I was just wondering, like, like where a good location is, or like what doctors to talk to. Well, you know, we have numerous doctors all over the state of Oregon and Washington. California, all over the United States in the 14 states that uh, allow medical marijuana, and we'd be happy to help you. Uh, okay. Just call our number, that number, 503-235-4606. We have a referral line, and we can definitely help you find a doctor who can help you get a medical marijuana permit. Now, the conditions that qualify here in Oregon and Washington are chronic pain. Chronic pain accounts for about 70% of the cards out there, and it's in a lot of different conditions. Everything from degenerative disc disease in your back, and we have probably half the chronic pain patients have back pain, whether it be compressed disc, bulging disc, herniated disc, ruptured disc, any kind of problem with those discs uh, causes pain and hurts and might even paralyze you. So uh, also, Chronic nausea and conditions that cause chronic nausea, like IBS, GERD, and uh, uh, Crohn's disease. Uh, things that cause spasms, muscle spasms, and severe ones, like multiple sclerosis, uh, Tourette's, and asthma. All of those qualify, as do seizure disorders, such as epilepsy. Also, glaucoma, AIDS, cancer, uh, hepatitis C. All of those things qualify for medical marijuana, and we have doctors all across the United States ready to help you. Just call us here in the Portland area. It's 503-235-4606. If you're outside of the Portland area, you can call us toll-free at 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. How's that? Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, we have doctor here in Portland who could, if you had the right medical records, they're working tomorrow on Saturday, and they could see you tomorrow, and you'd be legal Monday or Tuesday once you turned it into the state. Um, I have one more question. I was Go ahead. just curious, as, uh, if you guys had any uh, suggestions for um, munchies right now? <laughs> what? Munchies. Munchies. Oh, uh, you know, uh, you try an apple, uh, some hemp granola with hemp seed milk. That's a good one. I just like Manitoba Harvest hemp seed just straight out of the like the bucket. Yeah, the five I've gallons. got it's the like, big five-gallon bucket. That is great. And it's that. cheap, too. Yeah. You know, uh, and it's kind of like a cross between uh, walnuts, cashews. You know, you get the rich flavor of cashews with the, the flavor of walnuts in there, especially the after flavor. And it's the perfect ratio of omega-3 to 6 fatty acids. That's exactly right. Amazing, you know, they contain up to 35% protein, which is unusual for a plant protein. It contains all nine amino acids. The seeds are also high in unsaturated fat. Between 15 and 25% of hemp's EFAs, or essential fatty acids, are alpha-lineolic acid, or ALA. 
This is an omega-3 fatty acid often lacking in our diet. As a final bonus, hemp seeds contain a wide variety of minerals, phytosterols, and phospholipids, such as lecithin. So it's got all those good things. It's really good for you. All right. It Thanks makes so. me hungry. Eat I'm hemp eat soon. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Man. I, I've had the munchies a little too often, though. I'm <laughs> dieting. Uh, that's one of the, the negative effects of the appetite stimulant properties of <laughs> cannabis for me. <laughs> it might be good for you, but uh, that's I, it's. I just got to fight the munchies, especially at night. That's another story. <laughs> if you have a question for us tonight, G, we got about eight minutes to go. Call us at five zero three two eight eight forty four forty eight. That's five zero three. Two eight eight forty four yeah, forty eight. Is there any THC in this? No, there is okay. no THC in any of this stuff. All this right. is all I was, industrial. Was worth the question. No hemp. You know, there's no THC in the seeds and the protein and the oil, uh, which is used in any of these products. Mm -hmm. And there's no THC in the fiber. So you can't smoke made. that paper. No, no. Nope, the DEA you can't smoke these. the paper. But well, actually, you know, tobacco cigarettes good. by law right. have to be made out of hemp, hemp or hemp. flax That's because right. wood-based fiber is uh, toxic. Mm -hmm. So half of all the tobacco cigarettes are wrapped in hemp and the other half are in flax. Almost all of the hemp fiber comes from Spain and it's produced at three different mills here in the United States, two wow. of them in New Jersey, one of them in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and they supply all of the hemp and flax paper to roll cigarettes. So if you are a tobacco smoker, half the time you're smoking marijuana fiber that wraps around those cigarettes. Uh -huh. So now you know. We have another caller. Hello, caller. Hi, um, I have a question. I've just recently been diagnosed with a scoliosis in the severe case of it. Mm -hmm. Is that a qualifying condition? Yes. Yes, it does. I... We have thousands of patients who've received medical marijuana for scoliosis. You know, at our THCF medical clinics, we're in nine states right now, and we have referrals to doctors in other states as well. <laughs> but uh, we have helped over 100,000 people in those nine states get medical marijuana permits, and I would say at least a good thousand of them have scoliosis and received it for severe pain associated with scoliosis. There you go. Okay, someone had told me that I'd have to have, uh, like, several doctor's visits and, I don't, doctor's records and stuff. I, I don't know how yeah, to do Yeah, yeah, you know, for a doctor to write a medical marijuana recommendation in the state of Oregon, oh. Washington, and those others, they require that you have some sort of documentation uh, such as an x-ray report or a radiologist report, uh, something talking to doctors, uh, you know, that you're, uh, uh, you have one of the qualifying conditions. So most of the okay. medical marijuana specialists will require some sort of documentation. Okay. Um, would I just bring all that stuff to your guys' office on Sandy? Uh, well, the Sandy office is a petition office, so you wouldn't oh. take it there unless you were going to gather signatures. Now, we have a clinic office. Uh, over in uh, inner southeast Portland at 105 Southeast 18th Avenue. That's 105 Southeast 18th Avenue. Or you can just call us here in Portland. It's 503-235-4606. And it's uh, 503-235-4606. And if you are outside of the Portland area, you can call us for a referral to doctors all across the country at one 800 723 zero one eight eight but you could definitely if you have your records in hand you could walk into the clinic there tomorrow and have a medical marijuana recommendation from a doctor that you could turn into the health department and be legal on monday morning all right thank you very much sir you're welcome glad okay. we could help so uh gee we're down to just about five minutes to go shortly it won't be long you guys are going to scurry right. over to the the music corner there and make melodious harmonies well, why not? you guys are just about ready for that is there anything you'd like to say though in closing human i sure do appreciate you coming up for the show well i appreciate being invited and uh well, you're I welcome also, back anytime just I, come on down thanks Paul. i know you're going to maui so all the people over in the islands get ready for the tour over there yeah we're doing a tour with uh keith McHenry, the founder of food not bombs who's also oh, right. a also a, a great international activist for for good things. That's great. And uh, and I guess I just wanted to say I think it's looking up, man. You know, I things think things are getting better. <laughs> it's going to usher in a whole new age of cannabis freedom. We got the things made the ballot now in California to legalize it there. We have our petition to completely legalize it here in Oregon, mm -hmm. and the other petition to set up dispensaries for patients. And then up in Washington State, there's sensible Washington.
Washington. You can see their website at sensiblewashington.org, and they're putting an initiative on the ballot for the state of Washington so people can grow it there. By this time next year, the whole West Coast, Ecotopia, could we could have our... A uh, national flower, hmm. cannabis, legal <laughs> and allowed, and uh, you know I'm I'm excited about that. Me too. Well, thanks for coming on, folks. We are down to just a couple moments left here, as they dash over there, ready to play music for us. I want to thank you all for watching. You know we're gearing up with our Octa campaign, so remember come down to our benefit on Friday night, February 12th at 700 Northeast Decom Street. That'll be our opening salvo in our war to end adult marijuana prohibition, restore industrial hemp, and help medical marijuana patients. So once again, that's Friday night, 7 to the wee hours of the morning at 700 Northeast Decom Street. You can find out more about that at our website at octa2010.org. You know, we are tired of the lies about marijuana. We'll have no more legalize. It's time to legalize and restore hemp. Yeah. Good night.